Hi guys, can you hear me? Hello, yes we can. Can hear you, we can't see you. <laughs> One second, let me sort this out. Can you see me now? Yes. I can. Yay. <laughs> Look, I was trying to, to be all fancy and... and oh, my word. <laughs> but that didn't work out. So. <laughs> Great idea, but... Awesome. Um, so sorry for... for well, we'll delay. have to do another one and then you can set it yeah. up beforehand. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and show us how fancy you can really get. Yeah. <laughs> How are, you? How are you? I'm good, thanks, and yourself? Good, good, good. How's the week been? It's been stressful. It's been, um, it's been stressful. <laughs> <laughs> and I think everyone, everyone is actually saying, um, says that now. I think that's the new norm when uh, your week is just stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and your side, how's your week been? I mean, mine just flew by. I, I was like, yeah. today's Friday, what? Like, what happened to the rest of the week? What did I even do? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, let's get into it. Sure. So, my name is Michael Cost. I am a content creator as well as a digital marketer. So, there's two sides to me. Um, and I've been in the digital marketing space for about seven years now, um, both with the content creation as well as being behind the scenes. Um, so yes, that's who I am. All right. Awesome. So, I mean, to start off, we're going to do our COVID quiz to get to know the <laughs> lockdown version of Michael. Um, so answer these questions as fast as you can in the next 60 seconds. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. You know, you get you get the truth when there's pressure. So <laughs> Okay, ready? Ready. And go. Coffee or tea? Tea. Afternoon naps or sleeping in? Definitely afternoon naps. <laughs> Video call or voice call? Voice call. Definitely. Desktop or mobile? Um, both. Am I allowed to say both? <laughs> no, you must choose one. You must choose oh, one. No. Desktop, desktop. What? <laughs> are, you, are you a millennial or a boomer? <laughs> What's happening? Um, oh, that's Okay. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Email or WhatsApp? Emails. I have way too many WhatsApps. <laughs> Speakers or slippers? Sneakers. Wine or whiskey? Wine. Shop groceries in store or order online? Ooh, you're going to call me a boomer again, but in store. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite conferencing tool? Um, none. <laughs> they are all horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Morning shower or evening shower? Evening shower. Snack all day or three meals a day? Both. Uh, <laughs> food all day, meals, pre-meal, pre snack, everything. High five, high five. Home cooked <laughs> meal or order takeout online? Um, look, does depend, but I guess home cooked. Okay. And finally, your best lockdown hack. Um, oh, Netflix on mobile is the best thing. Oh. Uh, because if you are with living with other people during this time, during lockdown, having Netflix on your mobile where you can just go to your own corner and binge your own shows, it's, it's my That's ultimate. Best. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, Okay, so I mean, we all are impacted and affected in some way in this whole pandemic and the lockdown. And I suppose we can start off with like, what's been the biggest impact that this lockdown has had on your business? 
Yeah, I, you know, I think everyone's impact has been completely different. Um, even if you are, as I said, if you're living with people um, in, at this moment, every individual has been impacted so differently. Um, in terms of my business, uh, I lost a lot of clients. Um, a lot of projects were postponed to the end of lockdown, but you know, now no one really knows when the end of lockdown is going mm. to be, if you will reach level one again. So, you know, a lot of projects were postponed, losing a lot of clients, losing a lot of projects. Um, so that was a major um, impact on my business because it has a, a big financial implication. Mm. Um, so as a small business owner, that is a big thing. And you have to take that into consideration. And how now do you innovate to to combat that that um I, effect. I find that interesting from your side because you would think people would want more digital content to be created um you know sasha and i spoke about this a few weeks ago where we said like now's the time to have that digital footprint and to get people to assist to say look this is the way forward so it's quite interesting that people are like okay you know mm. pause on that now how then do they market themselves at all if they don't have someone like you pushing them and helping them with that? That's, that's quite interesting to hear because I know like as a designer, people generally cut marketing first. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. always like the first go to like, cool, we can't afford you. So, um, you know, they either do it themselves or they get it done cheaper or however the case may be. But when it comes to strategy, I think that's always really important. So, to cut that, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. I feel that, you know, everyone was like, oh, the digital space is going to be fine. And everyone who's mm. in the digital space is, is flourishing and living their best lives. Um, but, you know, interesting enough that, uh, so one of my clients, I was brought in to bring them into the digital age because their digital mm. presence wasn't there. Um, you know, and to do all of their digital marketing from uh, their strategy to their content creation to running their social media community management. Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole lockdown happened and I was like, okay, guys, well, this is the perfect time for you really to be going digital. Mm -hmm. And uh, for them, it was like, well, actually, we now don't have the budget because the budget has to now go to salaries, mm -hmm. but also... They're, they're hesitant, you know. Um, a lot of people are still very hesitant about the digital space. But also with the content creation side, I think that a lot of agencies and brands are going back to the old ways of influencer marketing, working with only the big macro people, big macro influencers, uh, doing things in the old ways, instead of really being innovative with micro influencers, with content creators, um, and really pushing the, the envelope of what digital marketing is. Mm -hmm. So I think slow progress, um, and I think it's been a shock to everyone's system in the digital space. So now it's time to say, okay, well, now that we've gotten over the shock, how do we better ourselves? Yeah, I definitely agree with people going back to sort of before social media and before digi the digital era. Um, which is very odd as well, because you would think that that's where people would like run to, to say, that's the only reach you're getting right now. You know, yeah. the old way doesn't work. I suppose it's a case of people feeling comfortable there. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said as well, people would assume that the digital sort of market would, would be booming right now. And it's really not. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it's, if, like you say, people obviously don't have money. Maybe they're scared. Maybe they just don't know how to get it done. That's, yeah, it's, it's quite a hectic, quite a hectic concept that people are going backwards right now. Exactly. So, I mean, I mean, from my side, I've seen, I've seen a lot of small businesses go online, but without a defined strategy, without any direction whatsoever. It's like, oh my word, the only place we can be right now is online. That's the only way we can reach our customers. Everyone is online for entertainment. They're shopping online, all these things. So, I mean, what are, what are the pros and cons of, first of all, being online, but also then not having a 
set strategy or a direction of how you are going to now engage and interact with your customers online because just like you've got a shop front in a physical store you need to kind of have a shop front on your digital presence yeah no, i completely completely agree with that and i i wish you can like say it a little bit louder <laughs> because <laughs> It's so, so true. You know, they say marketing without strategy is just a waste of time. Um, and that is what is happening. All of these uh, small businesses and content creators and individuals, everyone is going online. Um, and, and I always use this as an example. Everyone is going live, right? Live, live, every time. No matter what the strategy is, what we do, there's no strategy, we must just go live. And I do feel that small businesses and brands are like, oh, everyone is going live, so we should also go live. Instead of really thinking of the long-term effects that this period of time is going to have on your brand reputation mm -hmm. um, and what the long-term goal is. Yes, for the sh short time uh, goal, it might achieve a certain something, but um, it's about really looking at, okay, what is the digital landscape right now? Um, how do we find our brand and ourselves within that landscape? Just because everyone can go live doesn't mean everyone should be going live. Um, and I think that is such an important thing to remember when you are in the marketing space um, is that there's so many tools that are our advantage, but it's what tools are working for you, for your clients um, and really saying, okay, well, this works for me. Let's utilize that. Let's build that strategy as you say. Um, but also on the other hand, I do feel that, the knowledge of digital marketing has grown mm -hmm. over this period. And the knowledge of social media and all the, the um, capabilities of social media have grown. People now understand the digital world more now than ever before. So I think that that's a massive advantage of this, this increased uh, social media um, activity. Mm -hmm. I just feel like with a lot of the social media stuff, it's, it's chaos. So it's, I mean, you're getting fake news, you're getting news bulletins, you're getting people just selling, 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 selling all this. And it's all the same stuff. And there's no sort of like, okay, like Sasha's saying, where's the direction? Where's the strategy behind it? You know, whether it's someone selling flowers or if it's a big corporate company, a strategy needs to be in place. So that's quite important. And I think people have, it's almost like we just need to get sales out to get the money in. Um, and that's sort of what seems to be happening at the moment, which is, like I said, it's just blowing things up and mm. it's chaotic everywhere. So that's quite hard to navigate around, I think, as any business owner, first of all. And then second of all, sort of you throwing yourself into this huge sea of like everyone selling masks at the moment. You know, so people will just go on, on Facebook and they're like, we need 3 million masks. And then there's just comments everywhere. And it's crazy. I mean, yeah. we, we, bought, um, we bought a set of masks, but now I'm, I'm just mask shopping for better ones. And I'm like, oh my word, they're all the same. Like, what the hell? <laughs> um, what makes you different to the next mask, you know? Um, but I mean, going off that, what are what are some ways that um, businesses can you know leverage without a digital strategist behind them or without a digital strategy? I mean, are there any new sort of trendy um, ways that people are coming up with things? Are there any new um, I don't know um, like gimmicks or um, things that you see popping up within the digital space that content creators are creating. Um, I see a lot of challenges that businesses are hopping onto, you know, like a TikTok challenge. And that's just to get their brand in the stream of things. So, I mean, are there any, are there any new ways that 
brands and content creators can stand out of the crowd and out of the noise um, during this pandemic and um, make the best use of their online space? Sure. Look, it's, that's quite a heavy, heavy question. Uh, I think that, you know, that's a very, very loaded question because mm. each brand is unique and different. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think that you're saying it's chaos and there's so much noise. So a brand needs to then ask themselves or a small business um, owner or an entrepreneur, a freelancer, a content creator needs to ask themselves, there's all of this happening at the moment. Where do I fit within it? I don't want to go and make the biggest noise and add to the noise pollution that is happening on social media. It's about being really um, strategic about the choices you make uh, now on your digital platforms. It's saying, okay, well, everyone is making masks and I, I wanted to make masks as well. And I was like, oh, well, I can also sell masks. You know, everyone's doing it. Let me do it as well. But the thing is, if everyone is selling masks, then it becomes oversaturated. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what's happening with the digital marketing space. So it's about saying, okay, well, if I want to sell masks, uh, how do I make my masks completely different? Um, how do I make my masks true to my brand? So Tsepo Jeans is um he's a south african uh, um jean designer uh his brand is called tepo jeans and tepo made masks that were out of denim but were typically his style and i think taking that and really uh seeing what is being done and everyone mm. is selling masks but how do you bring your brand value to that i think that is very important for people at this time to ask themselves what is my value? What is my brand? And how do I plug it in? Um, in terms of gimmicks, you know, you, you bring TikTok up. Uh, so a lot of brands are now going into TikTok, um, which is great for TikTok as a platform because, you know, three months ago, there were only three brands on the platform really truly investing. But uh, at the same time, there are so many people on TikTok viewership and engagement has dropped on everyone's platforms because there are, there's too many accounts now. There's too much content now. Um, so it's about saying, okay, well, I know that people are being bombarded. So how do I uh, add value mm. to my viewers, to my clients, to my audience? Um, what type of value am I adding that when they are consuming my content, it's worthwhile? that they come back and they're like, you know, it's crazy, but I know I can go to Michael Cost's Instagram and on a Friday afternoon, he does a live stream that's really value um, mm. added type of content. Um, so I think it's really about asking yourself, what do I use? What gimmicks, what platforms do I use during this time to really build that strong connection for the long term? Mm. I think as small business owners, like, and from experience as well, in the beginning, it was a case of, okay, if I post on social media and uh, I post my services or my products or whatever the case is, people are going to see and they're going to buy, which is not the case. Like you're saying, there needs to be some kind of a value add now. It's no longer a, let me post my product and give them a discounted price. It's what can I give you that the next person that's selling the same thing can't? And I think that's what people miss about the strategy and how things work with, you know, it's like you're saying with the moss in the design industry as well. I think Sasha and I have sort of realized as well, like it's so inundated with, I mean, there's so many creatives, so many, and I can do it and you can do it and Sasha can do it and the next person can do it. But what can I bring that's different to what she can bring that's different? And I think that's where people start to realize, okay, you know, yes, we're selling masks or yes, we're doing design or whatever the case is, but we're doing it in a different way. So my style is different to your style. I might do masks for kids. You might do masks for elderly people, whatever the case may be. And I think that's what pe the mindset of people needs to start changing mm -hmm. to say, okay, 
this is how like you as a content creator or a strategist would come in and say, these are the tools that you need. Um, and yeah, I, I can feeling a workshop coming in here somewhere as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the end of lockdown? Because I think it's, it's skills that people aren't taught, you know, and I think obviously for you as well, it's difficult because that is your field. Um, but it's like uh, Sasha saying, little nuggets of information here and there that people can think, okay, you know, it's not enough to just post my product and say I'm, I'm running at a discount. There needs to be some, some more to it and a little bit more process behind it. Mm. Completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, do you, do you, we, we're all going to come out of this lockdown or pandemic with more knowledge than when we started in some way or another, you know, because there's so much happening. People are giving webinars, people are giving free courses. So it's impossible not to come out on the other side having learned, not learned something, you know. Um, do you think, though, that businesses will continue being online and embracing the online space? Or is it a phase that they're like, okay, for now we need to be online, let's just, you know, post all our products on Facebook. And then when things return, not return, when we enter our new normal, do you think it, it will continue? Will they embrace the online space or is it just a phase? Um, because I, I, I know a lot of small businesses who are very back then in like, we need to have a billboard, we need to have it printed. And I'm like, oh my word, there's no cars on the road. Billboards are not working right now. Um, so, I mean, do you think that it's here to stay, um, that digital is our new normal? Look, I, I think it's impossible to say what our new normal is. Um, you know, every week there's something new. Mm -hmm. that we, are, we can't predict what next week will hold. For all we know, Cyril will come back on and our president will say, Fellow South Africans, we're going back to <laughs> level five. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, I mean, we do not know what the future holds. Um, and that is very difficult to, to really future predict what the new normal will be. I do think that we, we have a great sense. Um, and I do feel that it, it won't be the way it is now. Um, but it won't be the way it, it was. And I do think it's going to be a amalgamation of both the, the old world and this new digital world. I do feel that um, this has been an incredible push into the digital era for everyone. Uh, everyone, no matter your age, no matter your, um, uh, your background, your field, Everyone's been pushed into this digital era. And I think that is truly, truly incredible. Um, but moving forward, are people going to uh, stay on the digital platforms um, when they don't have as much time as they do now? Um, I don't... Look, I think that, that some brands are going to be forever changed. Some small businesses are going to be forever changed. Um, a lot of people are going to learn social media skills that they never knew before. Mm. But moving forward, when things go back to, I have to sit in traffic, I'm taking my kids now to school, um, I have to sit in an office, um, I'm no longer remotely working, uh, or I only remotely work a few days a week. Um, I think when, when life goes back to, you know, uh, when the social activities come back in, when life goes back to sort of what it used to be, people won't have as much time uh, as they do now to make the TikToks that they've been doing, uh, to be investing all that time in creating content, in being uh, on a, a digital platform and creating digital marketing streams. So I do think that um, it might die down. And also I wanted to say, I touched on the point a little bit earlier, uh, TikTok, the viewership and engagement 
for each person has dropped. Um, not to say that TikTok viewership and engagement has dropped because that's actually gone up. But when it comes down to the, each individual, uh, their content isn't being viewed as much anymore. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you found this, but LinkedIn, um, yes, people are consuming more content on LinkedIn, but engagement has dropped completely on LinkedIn. Uh, Instagram also. And that is because this chaos that's happening on social media. Everyone is producing, people are a little bit fed up. Um, and I also do feel that uh, people aren't consuming uh, content as they used to be and moving post COVID, post pandemic, I think that our consumption will change again. It's changed now that people are consuming more or um, are not listening to Spotify anymore because they're not in their cars, but they're watching a lot of Netflix. But now when we move post pandemic, people are going to stop watching as much Netflix, going to be listening back to Spotify. Um, so I do think that uh, the behavioral patterns and the consumption patterns are going to change. Um, so it will be interesting. As I said, I think each person will be different um, mm -hmm. and each business might be uh, adopt new patterns, but it's all about also what, if you are a small business owner or a content creator, what are you going to keep a constant post? Um, what are you going to invest your time in now that will give you that long-term value that you will still do after this uh, lockdown and pandemic? It's quite interesting you're saying like, I think it was across the board for all platforms, that you were saying that there's so much going on and everything. The engagement has increased, but sort of the direct, like if I'm posting, maybe 20% maybe less, if not more, are actually being reached. It makes it that much harder for us in a digital world to actually get our stuff seen and to get, you know, things going. And I think that's where people are also missing the point. It's like, um, the more I post, the more they're going to see. And the more I post, the more people are, I'm going to reach. And it's interesting to see, like, just with these videos that we've been doing, the amount of people that it's reaching, like in conjunction with the engagements that are happening, in conjunction with the views that are actually happening. And it's sort of like 300 odd people have seen it, but maybe half of them are engaging. And mm -hmm. that's sort of like where we have to now say, okay, why, you know, is it a case of oh, it's not interesting? Is it a case of there's so many things like this going on? You know, I think people are at this stage are very confused. There's no direction for anybody really. And I know myself, I'm also quite frustrated because I don't know solidly, okay, this is the direction. So I think maybe now's a good time to start trying to figure that out. But again, I think we have to adapt every week or something else. Like you said, you know, we could have an address next week that changes everything again. And that's what's making it really difficult for any person in business at the moment. Um, but specifically for people that have been using a digital platform for so long, because like Sasha and I were saying before, sort of the push to digital, the digital era has been happening for years. But like you said, now it's sort of like, okay, in you go, that's it. <laughs> Um, so a lot of us have been using it, you know, consistently and, and all the rest of it, but it constantly changes for us every day, every week of something else. And we just have to keep adapting and keep growing and sort of investigating different avenues. I think that's, that's the hardest part for me this far. It's just the constant change. Um, so yeah, it will be interesting to see. I think like you said as well, that people will, maybe merge sort of the old world and the new world a bit and then some people will just go back mm -hmm. and others will just adopt these new practices and just carry on going forward and we'll just see how it goes from there i guess yeah, yeah i think i want to add on what you're saying is you know people who are going to go back to to normal are your mass consumers mm -hmm. right so um when you look at your audience as a brand as a content creator um, and a company, you need to say, okay, well, who is my audience? Are they, they usually consuming content during this time because uh, they are on their lunch break or 
Um, and once the pandemic ends, they will have that lunch break again. Uh, so it's also about understanding that the masses will go back to a, a sort of normal, uh, old uh, pre-pandemic way. Um, and it's important to know that, that the, the mass of South Africa, will that will happen to them. So it's about saying, okay, well, um, how am I creating value during this time, not bombarding my audience, and knowing that I'm building a relationship with them during this time that will help me post. Um, but then also the other thing is, is just, you know, a lot of people, their businesses have gone under or aren't making money anymore or have been retrenched. So I think a lot of the panic and the chaos has come from people need to make money. So oh, I have a sewing machine. <laughs> my auntie has a sewing machine. My uncle has a sewing machine. Let's make masks, right? Yeah, we're sort yeah. of in survival mode at, the, at yeah. this point. Yeah. Exactly. But I think that um, that is what's happened, this, this panic. Everyone's gone into a crisis mode, um, you know, this crisis management that we never really prepared for. Um, but no one's really thinking it through. Everyone's just like, okay, let's do it. Webinar, webinar, uh, live stream, live stream, TikTok, TikTok. Um, yeah. as, as you say, thinking it through, having that strategy. So I think that that, um, that panic really has played into the creating the chaos. Mm -hmm. And it will be interesting going back as well to see sort of, you know, people have lost businesses and they have retrenched and people have had pay cuts and some people have completely had to change their course of business in this time. So I think Sasha, you were saying one of your clients sort of did events and they can't do events, yeah. you know, for the rest of the year. So what do they actually do? Um, and it will be interesting to see sort of once that panic has like settled in. And I know in South Africans, we are, we are very determined <laughs> to sort of adapt and, you know, fix things and work it out and all the rest of it. But I think times are so uncertain that there's, there's no way of knowing. So it's really just experimental and sort of to see, you know, how things are going, um, which is, it's very scary. And mm. yeah, I guess we, <laughs> we just have to, you know, go week by week, piece by piece and sort of see how things go from there. And for the woman or, I say women, um, for the people that are doing masks and stuff like that, is it going to you know, continue? Um, are they going to make businesses out of this and are they going to adapt and do other things? Because eventually the need for it's going to run out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Agreed. Definitely interesting. Well, um, that was a cool chat. Um, Lastly, we'll end off with um, any offerings or cool content that you've got going at the moment that people can check out. Where can we find you? Sure. So I, it's my birthday next week. Ah, happy birthday. Yay, happy birthday. <laughs> so I've got some great content on my Instagram plan for the week. Um, and I'm just excited to uh, engage with my, my bananas. I call my followers bananas. Um, because they're a bunch of people who support me. Uh, so they're a bunch of bananas. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about uh, my birthday week. Um, but I have been running a IG live chats, and that was uh, before the pandemic and the lockdown, uh, where I get people from the digital marketing space, influencers or content creators on board every Friday. And we have a chat about uh, social media or... Um, how the digital world has been affected recently. Uh, so you can tune in at, at Michael underscore cost on Instagram. Uh, on my business side, um, got a lot of projects, thankfully, that have come through uh, recently. As I said, I lost a lot of uh, business in the beginning of the pandemic, but uh, thankfully managed to find new clients and work with contacts that I had before to get new jobs. Um, so I've got really awesome uh, things uh, in the pipelines for my cost studios, which is my business. Uh, and you can find that either at michaelcost.com or on LinkedIn, Michael Cost Studios. And yeah, building websites, doing some influencer management and yeah, exciting times. 
Awesome. I just noticed you have bananas on your shirt. I have <laughs> yeah. <to> say <laughs> I just noticed. That's awesome. Cool. Subtle, well, thanks subtle. so much for chatting to us. It was a very fun chat. And yeah, I'll wish you all the best with everything. And we will definitely be watching you on the social media platforms and getting some insight. Thank you, guys. And I really appreciate you having me as a guest. I think it was an incredible chat and an important chat as well. Um, you know, how do we manage in this chaos? And I think that a lot of people uh, aren't sure about what that answer is. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Bye. Bye.